Shakira? No, it goes, I'm an island boy. Do island things. God, it's so tempting to click leave meeting. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, dude, that's like been a thing that's been going around TikTok. There's like these two twin wannabe rappers and like they look goofy. I mean, like fucking like so cute. Uh, yes. Are they the dipshits with the face tattoos and the weird hair? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. them. No, yeah. With yeah. Like, somebody, it's... somebody was trying to tell me like, or sent me something where it was like a meme where it was like the Zach and Cody, the sweet life of boys. And they're <laughs> like, look what they grew up into being. I was like, I don't think that that's them though. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But yeah, one of them has like yellow hair and then the other one has brown hair and when no, i say I've... yellow i mean like yellow like no white, i i know it, it looks I know. like little banana fingers sort of on it's head. bad and they're white boys too so it's like that's not your hair texture you're like doing all this weird shit like there's i i went on their page and i creeped because i couldn't help myself and i wanted to see how <laughs> how long it took for them to get full face tattoos and like a year and it's like if that hey, That's not long enough time to think about the implications of a full face full of tattoos. Looking right at you, Post Malone. Saw you creeping on the Skinwalker Ranch. Would like to ask you respectfully to leave. Yeah, but he's buddies with all the the Ghost Adventures bros. Uh, I know. I was literally sitting on my um, couch earlier today and complaining to Coralie, who, God bless her, she's a lovely, wonderful, perfect roommate. But she was just like on her phone and like, nah, yes, indeed. And I was like, God, I can't fucking believe that. Goddamn, looking at pictures of Post Malone on the fucking Skinwalker Ranch. And she was like, I don't know what these words mean, Hannah. Would you want to go to the Skinwalker Ranch? No. Oh, really? I would. I would fucking <laughs> so into it. I no, would be dude, there. That's because Pardon things me. don't. Excuse me. Things don't follow you home. Yeah, I don't let him. I would love to watch you on Skinwalker Ranch. I bet you would fucking shit your pants. I feel like this is like the perk of being a skeptic and just going, nope, it's not there. I'm really good at pretending things don't exist. So you're really good at being irritatingly chill about like a dire situation. Sometimes, yeah, not always. Well, like that time that you were lost in the woods and then you were just like, what's up? I was just at the truck. I was like, ah, I'll kill her. Yeah, well, I knew where the truck was, so I just went back to my, I went just went to the bottom of the hill. I, I, that's a personal story that I mean, I think we talked about that. Yeah, before, we told it on one of the four one one episodes. I don't, I don't want to get lost in that story. Uh, what time is it, Hannah? I was about to say, would you like to get lost in some uh, tin hats? Because it's tin hat time. <laughs> I'm so nasally today. That was <laughs> atrocious. Uh, oh, that's Hannah, and I'm Megan, by the way. Yep, I'm Hannah. Yeah, it's too much. I sound like a ball of snot today because that's what I am. You're welcome, listeners. It's also the amazingly pitchy tin hat time entrance. Yes, excellent. Uh, This week we're talking about werewolves. Oh, 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 oh! That's exciting. Woo! I uh, I love it. It's uh, it's been a fun topic to to research. Um. Mostly, like, the stuff in the South has been really fun to watch Ooh. documentaries about. Really? Yeah. Uh, fun in, like, a not necessarily, like, super interesting, more of a, like, hilarious sort of a way. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I'll jump in and we'll start talking about the origins of the werewolf myth. Yeah. And sort of, like, where it came from. So, there's two... Cool two different um stories that kind of started the werewolf myth um i'm not really sure which one um kind of really propelled it forward i guess but probably both like like a chicken and the egg situation um yeah i don't remember the dates i think i had them written down at some point but i don't remember so one comes from mesopotamia one comes from greek mythology um the Mesopotamia one is uh, the story of Gilgamesh and Ishtar. Yeah. Um, and so Gilgamesh, badass warrior, goes out to battle, um, gets covered in battle ick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he returns, he returns from battle. 
uh, Babes looking sexy as fuck. I'm picturing uh, Jason Momoa. I mean, that's like the best bet. Honestly, I've been watching C, dude, on Apple TV. And oh, oh my God. I just love Jason Momoa. Uh, oh, I haven't seen. Great show. It's it's like future where like everyone is blind and. Um, oh, S-E-E. Yeah, S-E-E. C, right? Like I can see you because nobody can fucking see. Not the letter C. Like one, uh, one person. Anywho, so Gilgamesh goes to battle, returns, comes back, takes a bath, looking fly as fuck. Uh, Ishtar, the goddess, is just overcome with lust for for just Gilgamesh. She's instant like, sploosh. Yeah, her she's got some quivering going on. You know, weak in the knees, all that good shit. Um, and she begs, she wants it. Yeah, she wants it bad. She begs him to be her husband. Uh, yeah, he, he fucking's like, no, bitch, you're crazy. I've seen what you've done to your exes. And uh, that's because she turned all of her previous husbands into various animals. Um, uh, just each one, she's like, I'm done with you. You're whatever. And so like one of them was she turned a goat herder into a wolf. And so that's kind of the potential origin of, of that. I bet if we dug into that, Ishtar is probably like a deeply maligned character. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe dudes wrote that story. So I bet I'm just going to go off on a limb and say, I bet this dude sucked and they deserved it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's pretty likely. You can tell that with all mythology. Um, yeah. Like, all right. Seriously, so, whatever. Lycan. So Lycan uh, is the Greek one. Lycan was a king yeah. um, of Arcadia. And so he was super fucking mean um and he had a bunch of wives a fuck ton of kids like i think in the, like a couple of the stories i read like they don't know like he just had a ton like didn't know how his many name was children. Lycan? yeah his name was lichen it's l-y-c-a-o-n i'm just gonna say lichen yeah like 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 all lichen yeah i'm gonna go lichen like, right like, like like in the a, underworld like an underworld yes right like there's I think, the vampires and the lichens Mm -hmm, exactly yeah so um so he had a bunch of kids and wives he decided one day to uh sacrifice one of his children and try to feed it to zeus uh, ah! that was like a big no-no and he and zeus were like not homies well zeus zeus wouldn't have been into that because like his dad like ate all of his siblings and stuff and he was pretty irritated about it mm -hmm. yeah so you know Oh, I remember this story. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll let you so tell it though. I'm there's there's various accounts, right? So some say he sacrificed just a random kid and some say he sacrificed his own son. I've always um, heard his own son. And so basically the end of this, Zeus go like he finds out, right? He curses Lycan uh, to become a man-wolf hybrid. Um <laughs> So it's that's why it's the whole lichen, you know, thing. Lichen throw. Yeah, exactly. So um, interesting throughout history. But then there's when we move into France, um, yes. there's there is a fuck ton of stories about werewolves in France. Just you can't France. Yeah. Like, you can't like talk about werewolves without immediately going to France. Like werewolves are like a French thing almost. Yeah, dude, for real. Um, I have a theory about that that I will talk about in speculation. Um, about Excellent. why it's French. Broad generalizations. But anywho, um, so we're gonna go to a real life account of a werewolf. And yes, this, this is the one that I think probably has the most, I don't know, credit to it or like realness. I don't know um, how you want to phrase that. And it could be for mental illness. Can you see how excited I am right now? Yes, I can. It's because it's one you wanted me to talk about, too. So it's uh, Jean Grenier. I think that's how you say it. Sure. We're American. It's yeah. fine. It's yeah. Yeah. Interesting enough, there is a second Jean Grenier, and he is a philosopher. 
not the same person. So we're talking about a different person. We're talking about 1600s Jean Grenier, not like the 18 or 1900s Jean Grenier. Um, so we're 1603, Southwest France. Right? Times are bleak. Yes, bleak as fuck. You're a peasant. Everybody's a peasant. You're a if serf. you're a woman, you're, you're a not serf. allowed to talk yeah. and you can only go to church for fun. Yeah, exactly. So um, a bunch of children keep getting snatched up from roads and fields and they're disappearing without a trace. But also like without a trace, like 1600s, like nobody knew what to fucking look for, I guess. Like, I don't know. Right, like without a trace is pretty like. Yeah, like it makes me think like, I don't know. It's so easy to get away with murder back then. Like, all you had to do is not be there and say, I didn't do it. Yeah, pretty much. Right. You just had to be, honestly, kind of well-liked in the community. If you weren't well-liked, I mean, you were more likely to get called, like, a witch or a werewolf. Um, But anywho, so kids be getting snatched up. They disappearing. Okay. Vanishing Um, right off into the woods. Yep. Just disappearing left and right. Uh, a 13-year-old girl ends up getting attacked, but she survives, but it uh. happened under the light of the full moon. Shit, bitches. I know, right? Woo. Not um, the full moon. So at this point, 14-year-old Jean Grenier um, has been bragging about these attacks. Uh, he's 14? He's 14 years old. He so is- he's a tiny child. He is a freshman in high school. I guess for 1603, man. though, he's like a middle-aged like man. Yeah, like you're, you're like a grown-up person. You're an adult at that point. Like you're getting was, married in two years. Yeah, like so. He like was, even if you're a boy, you're getting married in two years. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I guess for no, men, you have to start getting married young because all of your wives are gonna die in childbirth. Yeah, I thought men got married like closer to their late teens, and the like girls were at the beginning of their teens because they had to like get that money. I think it really just depends on what kind of community you're in and how many kids you need to have to work on the farm. Yeah, probably your your, uh, class. But anywho, so 14-year-old John is uh, out here bragging a bunch about these attacks. He's, of course, trying to impress the ladies and telling one of them, like, hey, you know about all these missing kids? I did that. I fucking murdered them left and right. (laughs) Uh, oh very hot jean let's go yeah. fuck in the haystacks now what this is how you get the ladies uh, yeah mm-hmm. i um, just love child eaters so he, he he's take that one out of context attacks, and then uh and i'll have to read you the note that i wrote <laughs> and then he's claiming that he ran nine deep right so he had a little gang of nine <laughs> nine kids right nine boys no uh, i can't with you sometimes dude just a little gang like the little werewolves right like like the little rascals but they're eating people yeah pretty much like just oh my god the the french the the wolves um, like (laughs) the rascals Uh, yeah pretty funny so uh and he also claimed while talking to this girl that he loved young children for the tenderness of their flesh. Don't love that. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, so this chick uh, that he was bragging to, she ran and told like the 1600s cops about this. Right. Uh, because like, why wouldn't you? This dude right? is like, oh, the, the children, their flesh. Mm, num, 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 num um like, that's excuse me constable well. or whatever mm-hmm. sheriff nottingham yeah so she dips uh narcs on him and then uh jean was arrested and he just straight up confessed he was like yeah i did it that was me dude to do super fucking cool um he's lucky though because he didn't get sentenced to death like he Shit. you know which is kind of surprising even though he was, was it because he was young. 14 I don't, I think so, but it, the, like, the stuff that I read didn't give any accounts as to why he wasn't, um, you know, straight up uh, put on the little fire stand. What, where in France was this, did you say? Southwest France. That's Do you have a I, town name? Nope. That's, I wrote Southwest France. That's what I wrote. Oh, uh, because so. I feel like Nick has a book about this, The Beast of Him. Oh. I read 
two articles, so I am very well versed on this. Yes, you um, are. <laughs> you go. <laughs> okay, and so then according to another boy, because obviously he ratted out all these other fucking dudes. Right. And as soon as one of them got popped, the other ones were like, oh, shit. Um, and so another one, a uh, name I'm going to butcher, Pierre de la Tilher. Um, sure. He, <laughs> so according to Pierre, uh, Jean was taken to meet the Lord of the Forest, uh, who, who gave him an icy kiss and a mark on the leg, and then Ew. a wolf skin and unguent, which we learned from Google earlier, is lubricant or grease. I'm not comfortable with the Lord of the Forest giving these items to a to a to mm, a young boy. icy kisses, a little lube, and a wolf skin. Mm-hmm. And then a mark on his leg. Where on his leg? Like this feels like somebody should call yeah, somebody. Probably just a little white puddle. Anywho, uh, so and grease to turn him into a wolf. Jesus, um, Logan. And then he. <laughs> Did you just catch that joke? Is that no? It just took me a while to say anything. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then he was also, Jean was also told to never cut his left thumbnail. His left thumbnail. For the coke? Uh, yeah, clearly for the wolf cocaine that they were doing all the time. Just <laughs> um, No, honestly, so it's interesting, right? And I think the time period might sort of align. Um, but in the colonies, in like the 1600s, um hey, this is probably 100 years after this though so it might not make sense but um they would get into like these brawls like fighting was like a the, like a sport um yeah. in the early colonies in america and you wouldn't cut your thumbnails because you could win a fight by gouging out someone else's eye yeah um so i, I don't know I, I don't think that's a super well-known thing um, that like they would they would sharpen it even and then you just Shit. never fucking cut your thumbnail so I don't know if this is some sort of like weird tie to that but that's what it made me think of um, yeah you gotta sneeze okay I'll just take a drink real quick but anywho um so although he confessed Jean confessed and people corroborated his story, dude was just sent to live at a friary. Oh. Um, And- uh, Like a nunnery for dudes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically a little monk place, right? So they sent a lot of um, disturbed people to, basically if they couldn't figure out what the fuck was wrong with you, you usually got sent to a friary. So like an asylum, sixteen. Yeah, it's sixteen hundred style. So of course Jesus was involved. So it's just yeah. like, man, if we pray a bunch with you, and you get the I like fresh pretty, air, pretty heinous. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, probably though. Uh, so because we learned later, anything from the Penhurst Asylum. Later on, like this is like, I don't know, uh, eight years later or so. Um someone from his hometown went to visit Jean uh, and dude straight up was a bit wolfy. He, really? uh, he was walking around on all fours. Um, he had sunken eyes and teeth like fangs and would like growl at people and shit. Okay. So, but had he been kept for eight years in a weird asylum place where he wasn't allowed to be with people and maybe regressed to an animalistic state because he was treated like an animal and called the beast of Flefarm? I mean, potentially, but those do- details are not present. So it's totally possible, but he ended so he up just dying. Turning into a wolf. He, uh, he ended up dying in 1611. So the, all this stuff happened in 1603. He dies in 1611. So really not that long. He's like 20 after. years old. Yeah. Yeah, Damn. exactly. So, uh, yeah, uh, sad, but uh, that might be a case of some mental illness. But I don't know. Who knows? You know, he had like wow. he started to look like a wolf. Like, I don't know. That's probably some of it is some uh, sort of hysteria, right? Like sunken eyes. Yeah, you're living in a friary. Teeth like fangs. I don't know. I don't know. Thing, like just teeth, be, maybe um 
yeah, I don't know. I mean, some people have really pronounced canines, but like he could have been filing. Yeah, it's true. I mean, and he could have been chewing on shit, you know. Yeah, they could have broken or something too. Mm -hmm. So who knows? But uh yeah, there's a lot of stories in France. A lot of fucking stories. Um, but we are done with France. We're gonna come to the good old US of motherfucking A. Are you gonna sneeze? Yeah, can you actually this is, it might be a good time to hit. Okay. So we move to America. We are in Michigan. Where are we in Michigan? Uh, in the woods of Michigan. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Cause it's going to be flipped, but, uh, I want to say towards like the, I don't know, like the pinky finger, but like lower like sort of like on your palm like that michiganders and michigeese tell us where this is yeah i don't know it's somewhere uh near paris paris michigan so that's so uh, funny we went from france to paris michigan (laughs) (laughs) how did you not use that as a segue i fucking don't know it's because it's down on my notes like way far down because i get to that at the end but uh anywho so we are talking about the dog man of michigan Ooh. yeah um i heard doug man and i was like no not doug dog dude i actually saw somebody did that as a halloween costume and it was fucking phenomenal cute so good yeah okay so anywho dog man of michigan in the woods of michigan lives a seven foot tall Buck. blue or amber eyed uh canine monster with the torso of a ma- of a man and the head of a wolf but Uh, it's a dog man but he's a dog yeah they call wait so hang on can i ask for a clarification Mm -hmm. so it's either blue or amber yes yes the colors that are the opposite end of the color spectrum correct amundo we're glancing at it we're getting confused between like red and yellow this is why it's been a very fun thing to research um yeah seriously all of them say that too all of them say blue or amber dyed is this a is this a like laurel yanni situation with a with the cryptid laurel yanni remember when that that thing was going around where people were hearing the voice say laurel and some people heard it say yanni it's like the blue dress dress. oh i know what you're talking about uh i i don't know like i saw a blue dog man i saw an amber dog man i saw i seen a blue one i seen an amber one yeah, I think that's definitely what it is. Some people see blue eyes, some people see amber, um, but it's not like two people in the same party see different colors. They usually say the same color. So, you know what I mean? Just picturing SoCal girls with like vocal vibe, be like, oh my God, no, those eyes look totally amber. Mm-mm, no, Stephanie, they're blue. No, Kenzie, shut up. They're amber. Uh, or it's like uh, when people with blue eyes try to convince everyone that they have green eyes. I feel like that's <laughs> that's definitely a thing. No, you don't. Your eyes are blue. You, you know, lost. My, I'm sorry. My, my favorite thing is like now we have all these filters right on our phones where it's like you can do the opposite spectrum sort of thing and then like hold your eye up. And it's like, yeah, if it's orange, you probably have green eyes. If it's not you fucking don't like the, yeah they're, they're not green but anywho i digress um so the dog man of michigan he appears in a 10-year cycle in <gasps> years that end in seven Ooh, lucky uh kind of interesting though uh he was originally cited in 1887 that's the first sighting um but in 1987, last year I was born. Yeah, that's such a good year. Uh, 1987, radio DJ uh, Steve Cook played a song that he wrote about the Dogman monster. Play it for us now. Uh, I don't have it queued up. Fuck, I should have done that. Damn it. Maybe we can post it on our Instagram. Um, Hit pause. <laughs> Okay, okay. Okay, so okay, our high 
our high budget stuff. I'm just gonna put my little microphone to the speaker of my phone, so we'll see how this Excellent. goes. This Excellent. This is the legend, the talk. legend of the dog man. I'm so pumped. Looked around inside, then the thing let out an unearthly scream. And came oh yeah. Out. Did it stop? said very much about whatever happened then. They just picked up their belongings and left that night and were never heard from again. Ooh. Do we need to do more? No, I don't think so. Okay, okay I think we got That was amazingly it. bad. <laughs> so bad. I, I need to know every word to that song and start doing it at karaoke. So apparently this dude like played it in 1987 and it became like something that like was popular within the region. Like they would play it I don't know I don't think regularly because obviously it's a terrible song uh I'm sorry Steve Cook but um yeah like uh, it's some magical sort of bad that you love yeah it's um it is it is definitely like good bad I like kind of like the uh the room you know the movie yeah yeah oh oh god yeah yeah right good bad that's the bad yeah that's the good kind of bad but anywho, so of course, shockingly, sightings increased after that song was played in 1987. People were then like calling in all the time and be like, bro, I saw the dog, man. Um, Shit, bitches. Interesting enough. So one of the, like, the best sighting stories from this region actually came from 1937. Ooh. Seven. Seven, seven, seven. right? Ah. Um, where a guy is fishing on a riverbank somewhere in the woods and out from the woods comes the dog man and he is seven feet ish tall and he has amber eyes and uh growls at this dude and like you know sort of appears and this dude's like ah cool i'm gonna dip and like dips out and like the thing i guess doesn't follow him but like that is the the most interesting sighting of all of them but yeah it's really prevalent in the region and uh yeah people think the dog man of michigan curious to see what people think if that's uh real or not yeah we've got a about six years we could arrange a visit try and go see the dog man Ooh, yeah that would be fun that would be right right so we land on a year that ends at seven and yep, yep, yep. Out near the woods of Paris, Mich- Michigan. With little binoculars on. Yeah. It's definitely a des- like a vacation, you know, destination. Oh, that's a destination vacation for sure. Mm-hmm. Paris, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Like, where are you guys going? We're going to Paris, Michigan. Mm-hmm. No, you just say Paris. You hands down, you definitely just say Paris. I'm like, yeah, oh my Paris. God, wow. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. We're going to see the dog man. What? Yeah. yeah, he lurks in the woods. It's going to be great. Exactly. 100, 100%. So the last one I want to talk about is going to be the last case. It is in the hills of Kentucky. Oh, fuck. It's, I mean, it's gold as far as content goes. Um, I would definitely encourage people to watch this. Like, it's like a shiver. I think it's the one who produces it, but it's a show called like boogeyman. If I remember correctly, I'm probably going to have to pause the recording at some point. But uh, we're going to talk about the Barilla of Kentucky. Barilla. So uh, that is B-E-A-R, bear, rilla, right? Like bear gorilla combo. It's no, a, I'm, it's a I'm with you. I'm bear. just horrified. And like, I don't know what comes out of Kentucky. <laughs> okay, so... um. The uh, bear gorilla uh, hybrid lurks in Kentucky's hills and it's bloodthirsty for prey. Uh, Of course. Hands down, though, the funniest shit I've ever seen ever comes from that documentary that uh, we should link because you can watch this whole fucking episode on YouTube for free 99 in 45 minutes into watching this show. Um, Maybe it's small little something something um before you watch it but ron coffee um he is the leading expert on the barilla 
and he has Excellent. like a whole little paranormal um uh like crew that he runs oh, with yes. and shit but like he's considered the leading expert in the area i end up looking him up he's written a couple are books the, are they like the barilla ghost facers yes hands down yeah yeah thousand thousand percent uh yes to that um excellent i wanted to find a way to actually join their like society but it's on facebook and i don't have a facebook so Fuck. um yeah i know it's disappointing because thousand percent would i be into this but the bearilla uh is exactly what how it's described it's like a bear gorilla combo there's a couple different videos that i've seen like there's one specific video that's like i don't know what the i don't know it's an older camera it's like think like 80s 90s yeah uh, like not the 90s yeah but like i guess i should say 70s 80s not like 90s but like camcorder somebody's small home video and somebody takes a, a video of something in the woods and it sort of looks like a bear but it runs a little bit differently than a bear um and it runs towards the camera and then the film stops and then that's it and that's all that there is in the film it's just this thing running down the mountain i'm pretty sure it's a bear i'm like 90 percent sure it's a bear this sounds like it's probably it sounds like a bear right all these sightings right they're like oh my god it's like seven feet tall roughly the size of a bear when it's on its hind legs um you know uh you know it's lurking especially the the bears in that area yeah i mean everything basically sounds like an actual bear um i would say that most of this stuff sounds like a bear right like a dog man seven feet tall well i mean megan you know what the what kentucky's biggest export is that leads me to my next point so one of my favorite theories about the bearilla is that the hills of kentucky where the bearilla is commonly sighted uh for the last hundred ish years is where they make moonshine a fuck ton of moonshine All of, if it's if it comes out of kentucky it's good moonshine and when do they make moon shine on the full moon exactly. you can just see it like a that's what they call it, moonshine just like a werewolf so under the light of the full moon so they can take it to their car and shit and like the best example is like you know okay you're sampling your product a little bit you're oh yeah you're in the woods at night you don't have any fire other than what's you know related to your little distiller shit um so you're really under the light of the full moon things get a little bit weird and i don't know about you but uh if you drink enough moonshine the moonshine that i've had the homemade shit uh you kind of hallucinate sometimes oh Uh, i almost had to get my stomach pumped yeah i mean it's strong as shit like apple pie moonshine is fucking oh, dangerous fuck that noise dude oh, i'm talking God. about shit that comes from a pickle jar that's so clear it's scary and they pour it into a little one of them little dixie cups like you have in your bathroom when you were a kid that's all you get all night oh uh, i'm and sorry why do you think they made why do you think that they made mountain dew no, no, I know. I know that Mountain Dew is to... Yeah, so you take your little bit of moonshine and you mix it in with a big-ass drink and then you're just like, well, I guess I'll sip on this and then 20 minutes later... Yeah. You lost your top and you're dancing next to a fire and just like the it's remains like, of your sports bra. Like the tequila makes her clothes fall off, but it's like, no, no, it's moonshine. Moonshine makes her clothes fall off and her mind fall out of her brain. Like, just Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely just dancing and then later i was like on the ground being like i think you need to take me to the emergency room and cody was like you don't need to go to the emergency room you need to stop being a pussy i was like you're not wrong please give me water yeah moonshine that that moonshine came from kentucky and it was yeah yeah so there's a chance that people sampling their product getting a little Oh yeah, no, that oh, weird you, in the woods. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for right? sure. Right, they're seeing some weird shit, that type of thing. But yeah, they're really the bear rilla thing. Hilarious. Like, at one point in this documentary, 
the way it opens is this dude telling a story and he's probably roughly our age so let's say 30s and um he <laughs> he's like yeah we're teenagers and we're gonna go out hunting the next morning and this and that and he's like so we definitely weren't drinking like <laughs> He's like, you're a teenager in the woods with your friends and you're not drinking. I don't know if this is an American thing or what, but like, if you go to the woods, you're fucking getting drunk with your friends. Like, I don't believe you. <laughs> like, like nobody, I just, I don't believe you. Nobody believes sir. you, bro. And so like this dude is the one, he ends up seeing the Barilla, wakes everybody in the camp up and goes, we gotta fucking go, you know, sort of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of, I also wouldn't put it past a moonshiner to put on some big weird fucking outfit and go roam around and keep people away and start up or start up the rumor, that sort of stuff to keep people out of the woods. Yeah. So that way yeah. the people would stay out. And if they saw something, heard something out there, oh, fuck, it's a barilla, not it's, you know, Johnny yeah. and Joe Bob and whoever out in their fucking still. Yeah. And I mean, now it's probably not moonshine. <laughs> now it's probably a pot farm. So I, I mean, let's like- be real, Megan. It's death. Yeah. You can use the same equipment as that you would use at the still to make meth. And it's, it's a little bit easier than growing pot. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I know there was like a whole documentary. I never watched it though. So I'm going to speak on something I don't know about at all. That you just Uh, read the blurb on on Netflix. Yeah. That there's that documentary on Netflix. That's like the whole, like, I don't know. It's like the mountain of marijuana thing where it's like, yeah, that one, that's the one I'm, did you end up watching it? No, I read the blurb too. I think it's in California. Yeah, yeah, it's in California somewhere. Netflix just really California. wants me to watch it because I think it can oh. smell how much weed is in my house and yeah. um, that yeah. it could see how many murder things that I was just like, this is murder, and it says, "Wait, do you want it?" And I'm like, yeah. no. I just don't want those topics. Like, I don't want murder. To I don't need them the holding marijuana. hands. Okay. Yeah, like those are separate interests. They're both like, separate, and they're, they're not a way- Venn diagram. It's right. not a Venn diagram. They're separate and, and they're all way they help middle. me calm down. Yeah. And that's it. I need them to help me calm down. I don't need them together. Yeah. I, like, I want to watch a documentary about, um, you know, Ted Bundy. I was and- literally about to say Ted Bundy and like sit my CBD pen and be like, man, who's fucked up? Yeah, exactly. Um, there was another one, Sam. Sam Little? No, what's the Sam one? winchester no the one back east sam sam little no it's not sam little that's not his name it's something like david berkowitz is his name son Son of sam Sam. son of sam that's the one i'm thinking of the the son of sam um that documentary was interesting but anyway anywho uh so barilla fucking hilarious don't think it's real that's the one that has the least amount of credit to it uh most yeah, moonshiners are telling you it's out there it's definitely not yeah so uh ron coffee though he fucking believes it and he will tell you about it um and hang on just a second let me pull up that clip i don't i don't know why like i said i think because i've watched this documentary so many fucking times i just think this clip is fucking hilarious excellent we're, we're gonna play it anyway as his wife i worry about him it has been linked to several fatal attacks throughout the country what? and uh, so it's it, it's it's a baddie you know <gasps> i don't know why but it's uh it's a baddie it's a baddie it's a baddie has just Is been she talking fucking- about barilla yeah fuck yeah she's talking about people across the country because ron coffee is gonna go out with the shiver crew and they're gonna hunt the fucking barilla and then all they do is stand stand like sort of near like a really thick grove of trees and go yeah i think it's there i think it's there and then like don't really do anything about it and then they pour like plaster molds and shit like i said hands down one of the best documentaries probably ever done excellent i, I it's so interesting <laughs> it sounds amazing honestly i'm gonna watch it for sure it uh it really is 10 out of 10 would recommend uh ron coffee he's written two books uh one of them is on the barilla so definitely um yes. definitely read that let me know how it is um but yeah, so speculation corner. I'm gonna throw this out there. 
I think the reason why we hear of so many werewolves or barillas in Kentucky and in France is because people are drunk there a lot. Like that's a, <laughs> a generalization, but like it would be fucked up in France. Like the French are known for drinking a lot. Kind of a kind of a historic Gerard de Purdue. Sure. Um, and people in Kentucky known for drinking a fuck ton of moonshine. So I feel like there's uh, a little bit of a, a connection there. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, also people tend to drink in the woods. I drink in the woods. I feel like, like werewolves have been seen in Scotland and that is also a very drinky place. Yeah. Yeah. And in Great Britain, like uh, there have been a, a lot of accounts of uh, around like the witch trials and all that where people were like being, you know, accused of being witches. There were actually a lot of werewolf trials. People were accused of yeah. being werewolves, which I think is not talked about enough. I feel like that's something that, you know, should know. Werewolves, werewolf trials, not just the witch trials. That's so, crazy, it dude. It didn't happen like in Salem. Nobody was accused of being a werewolf in Salem. But uh, yeah, in Europe they were. So that's really fucking interesting. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so alcohol plus the forest equals, oh, shit, is that a bear or a werewolf? So, yeah. Yeah. The more you know. Well, that one time when I was in the woods and I had imbibed, I was like, oh, shit, it's a Sasquatch. But it was a moose. Yeah. To be fair, moose are fucking huge. They're also, I would say, scarier than running into Bigfoot yeah it was a yearling moose like with little high fives yeah are they still pretty fucking dangerous though like a dopey thing yeah well that means mama wasn't far far off yeah yeah i still don't ever want to get fucked up by moose so also like there's been like there are a lot of different stories of like from france and that's that is interesting i wonder why Although the anthropomorphized wolf does show up in a lot of different cultures and like myths and legends and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, The recurring theme though was definitely France. Like it was a lot of like, I would say medieval period shit came out of France. Like, I don't know Mm -hmm. whether it was during the, the medieval period that like people were very obsessed with the ideal of werewolves. Um, But yeah, they were into it in France fuck yeah oh so, yeah definitely uh definitely a fun topic though so yeah. uh to look into uh but i have yeah. to watch that documentary man thousand percent uh i will link it when we post this episode so it'll be linked below uh definitely would encourage everyone to watch it it was a good time very good excellent time. fuck Don yeah Coffee, uh seems like a true expert so, so what do you think, DeLuca? Do you think that the, uh, the I almost said vampire, Jesus Christ. Do you think that the werewolf is out there? No, I don't think werewolves exist. I don't think that they are real um, at all. I really don't. I don't think that there's any sort of, um, I guess, mutation sort of um, mythical thing. Like, I don't think vampires are a thing either, so... I, how I, dare you i wish like that would be really cool but also like i don't know maybe not maybe. so you know but no i don't i don't think any of that shit's real i think probably if anything a lot of people are seeing bears on their hind legs um there was a bear in new jersey a couple years ago that uh was missing a right like its front right paw and so it couldn't walk on all fours and it's straight up there's a fuck ton of videos too you can look it up there's a fuck ton of videos of this bear walking through people's front yards, broad daylight on its hind legs, like straight up do 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 do, like Smokey the Bear, strolling through people. Wiggling on yards. through. Yeah, dude. Full, but full also walking. Poor buddy. Yeah, he got killed by a hunter later. So. Oh fuck! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it happens. It's a bear. Um, but so I could imagine that throughout time, right? I mean this. Bears have probably survived getting their paw caught in a bear trap and gnawing it the fuck off or some shit. 
and then surviving and whatever. So I don't think it's unreasonable to think that either people are seeing bears on their hind legs because they're about seven feet tall Mm -hmm. and bears are scary as fuck. And when people are scared, their adrenaline goes and like, I don't know. That's my thoughts though. Also in that first one that you said, the werewolf could just be a like metaphor for a bummer ass child murderer. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. The Jean Grenier one. Yeah. Yeah. In France. And then, you know, like in general, werewolves and vampires and that kind of stuff are typically metaphors and allegories for like disease and murder, that sort of a thing. Yeah. I think the Jean Grenier one, I think that like he was an actual person though. I don't. Yeah. No. But I do think that he had, you know, some mental illness. I mean, fuck for all we know, he was schizophrenic. Well, they called, they called Albert Fish the werewolf of Wisteria. Oh, shit, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, yeah. What are your thoughts? Do you think werewolves are real? (sighs) I think that there are people who are able to commune with the spirit of the wolf. Mm -hmm. Do I think that people turn, get bit by something and lock me up, get turned, turn into a werewolf under the light of the full moon? Mm Mm-hmm. I really wish, but I don't think so. Yeah. Are you caught up in the fantasy uh, that I am, uh, which is Underworld, I believe, too? Yeah. Uh, Where there's a werewolf vampire hybrid that is sexy as he's he's in the first he's in the first one. one? Yeah, he's in the first first one where it's a hybrid. He's the the Corvinus. Yeah. That yeah. dude's fucking hot. Dude, I love the underworld. And like Michael Sheen, Martin Sheen? Michael. You got it right. Michael, Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen. Has no business being as hot as he is as the werewolf dude. Doing like going from that to a Zeraphiel and Good Omens. It's like, fuck you, dude. Like, ew. Just like be cute. But uh, like really hot as Lucian. He's no. really hot as Lucian. Mm. Wrong. Uh, hard pass. I would be a vampire. If Lu- like, if that's the Mm-mm. yeah but did you not remember the underworld one where lucian and like the vampire and like i don't think Victor's michael sheen daughter- is an attractive man that's Buckle really up. what it comes down to i don't what? find michael sheen to be an attractive man no and he's not unless he's in these movies well he's pretty he's just like he's very cute mm, no he's got a he's got weird features like it's, <gasps> he does How dare you? Uh, he's got big old fucking eyes his nostrils i think it's his nostrils his nostrils freak me the fuck out because they are so large. They are large nostrils. They are, but I still think that when he is Lucian the werewolf lord or whatever. Um, but this is going back to like from when I was 13 and the formative jerking off year. So mm-hmm. now I'm stuck thinking he's hot forever. Yeah, but I mean, Kate Beckinsale, so right jesus i mean like that is that is the person in those movies like she is oh yeah like this is okay so her her and the canine the fucking i don't know whatever the The lichen vampire hybrid guy that's my sexual panic right that's my sexual panic of kate beckinsale or that dude or them together whatever right that That is absolutely that is some bi panic for sure yeah hands down (sighs) yeah anywho it's been a good talk it's good talk. yeah do you have anything else to add um you should watch brotherhood of the wolf if you like werewolf things now because i've never heard of that it's a french film that i was really into when i was in high school because i wanted people to think i was cool Mm -hmm. um yeah it's it's werewolfy i think it's like i think it's based around that case you talked about that first one jean grenier yeah yeah. But it's as if it was like an actual, yeah. Death of. So he was like bragging to fourteen-year-old girls about no, fucking it's, it's slaughtering not, children. Not, it's not a biopic. Okay, okay. It's a horror movie, loosely based on the idea that there was a werewolf roaming around in France. Honestly, One of no. the eighty-seven thousand times a werewolf was running around in France. I mean, it makes sense. Okay, right. dude, so, like, maybe there are were- werewolves in France, but there aren't here. 
Maybe. You know, I just watched a Doctor Who episode where there was a werewolf in England. It was England. It wasn't France. So. It's always <laughs> anywhere, anywhere in space and time, but it's probably going to be London during the Blitz. Yeah, right? Like, it's fucking, it's always London. Anywho, uh, yeah. I don't have anything else to add. I don't want to drag this out too much farther. This I don't either. Really okay, you guys. Uh, I would rather go watch Underworld. Anywho. Uh, Dude, let's do it. Please. Please, 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 everybody, remember to rate, review, and subscribe. We're on, like, Apple Podcasts. I, I, fuck, I don't know if we're on iTunes, but Spotify. We're on, we're on app, Apple Podcasts is iTunes, isn't it? Is that not the same thing? I don't know. There's a different app on my computer. I fucking I don't know, dude. I don't have Apple anything. But we're on Google Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We are on YouTube if you need to look at our pretty, pretty faces and the fish behind me. And if you have any uh, neat stories to tell us, uh, please either slide into our DMs on Instagram or send us an email at tinhattimepodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and once we have enough stories, we will do a listener story episode. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Super exciting, Uh, but all right. Cool, guys. Thanks. Uh, We'll catch you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.